Before we begin this episode, a quick message to the CHC audience. We would like to invite you to check out another podcast that we enjoy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get going. This is your world, man. Hi, this is Steve. I'm here with my friend Scott. We want to tell you about our podcast, Origin of Speaksies. Every week, Scott and I talk about uh, idioms, words, and phrases that we use every day, and also the history and stories behind them. Yeah, so you can learn about phrases like cut your jib, loaded for bear, yeah, raining cats and dogs, break a leg, but but more importantly, we learn about all the animals Steve hates or dislikes. Now, hate hate is a very strong word. Well, so some he respects like bears, but very much dislikes. No, I, I hate oh, most you do. of these animals. Okay, so wanted, you do. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify it's a very strong word. Okay, so learn about how much Steve hates raccoons and uh, how possums are gross. Go to our website. Speaksies.com. The word speak, C-I-E-S.com. And if you don't type it in correctly, you'll learn about Charles Darwin and stuff. Yeah. Let you in on an aspect of the world that you're uh, not normally accustomed to. I could have been a totally different person. Yeah, right now. Since 12 hours ago. Could have been wearing a business suit today. Who knows? <laughs> With a fanny pack. With a fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> Just classing up the joint. That's a fantastic idea. It's the only kind of ideas I have, sir. It's Corner House Chronicles Day. It's just different enough. And here's the kicker, boss. They're all the same personality. <laughs> <laughs> They're assholes. Yeah. yeah. Just, just 1.5 million <laughs> asshole penguins. <laughs> Best part. I'm going to try and pace it out, so just as you forget about me, I'll just pop in and remind you. Hello again, everybody. This is the Corner House Chronicles coming at you with episode 71. This is the end of February. I'm John. I'm Jason. And we're here to squeeze one more in for the end of the month. Surprise. Yeah, we teased you at the end of episode 70. A little bit. That, that was the last episode, but then lo and behold, we got some time to kill, so... Why not use it? Let's fill it, yeah, for sure. More content, the better. So welcome aboard. It's going to be a quick hour a couple things to get to right off the get-go for you. Um, going back over last week's episode, episode <laughs> 70 there, I made a couple of uh, statements that I'd like to, um, I won't say retract. Correct. 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 There we go. Yeah. Let's attack the source. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> fake news. When, uh, episode we were, 70 is fake news. <laughs> we were going through, uh, when we were going through our brackets, I said Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior, and I said WrestleMania Five. It was actually WrestleMania six. We did not fact check that. I did fly. not. I said it so quick, and then I thought about it, it later right. that night. Yeah, and I was like, no, that's got to be fucking right. It wasn't. No. no. It was one year off. It's WrestleMania six. Mm-hmm. It was a champion versus champion moment. Oh, it was. It was a big deal. Yep. Five was the mega powers explode. It was. Hulk and Macho Man. Equally as entertaining. It's true. I think Ms. Elizabeth had a key role in that one. She did. She a, did. It was a big time. Tearaway dress, I believe, or no? Was that before WrestleMania? Yeah, that was before mm, WrestleMania. I think it was a SummerSlam. Yeah, when so they were partners, still. Yeah, maybe. But that's what caused it because Hawk was looking a little too hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Knock it off, Hogan. And the other thing um, we talked about uh, taking my afro out for a night on the town. <laughs> and I I made the statement that once I picked my hair out and walked back into the bar, that the excitement level went up. The atmosphere changed. The atmosphere said. changed, yeah. yeah. And uh, there was excitement in the air is what I said, quote unquote. <laughs> and to me, listening back to it, it felt like I was implying there wasn't already excitement in the air from the band playing. That was also fake news. The bar was hopping. It was a We'd great like to show. Apologize to Backstreet Affair. I know, right. Hopefully they didn't take offense to it. <laughs> If you ever hear that, <laughs> please listen to this one for the correction. That's right. But the atmosphere did change. It went from, you know, excitement to electric, electric to excitement. It was all in there. It was a good time. I'm going to do it again here pretty soon. Pick the fro out. And it's getting out there, man. I'm close. I'm just glad it's not summertime. You'd be, ooh. I'm going to die if I keep oh this hair. Oh, my gosh. I got to get rid of it. So that's how I wanted to start 71. I wanted to get rid of that. Get that off my chest real quick. Confess, my child. Confessions. <laughs> Feel so much better now, don't you? I do. I do. A, a weight has been lifted, uh, and I'm replacing that weight with 
high alcohol content <laughs> beer. <laughs> There's only three in this series, correct? To my knowledge, yeah. Okay. Yep. We covered the first two, and we even teased it in 70 that we were going to get this one mm-hmm. for the next episode, and here we are. It was quick, folks. I got to say, eighteen ninety nine for a four-pack of beer? Yeah. I almost put it back. I don't blame you there. Some of these are quite expensive. No, it is a 9.3, and they are 16-ounce cans. Yeah. So, I mean, I get it. You're paying for what you're paying for, but, ooh, man, I had a moment where I was like, do we really need to do this? <laughs> <laughs> if there was more than three, I probably would have put it back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We should probably say what it is. I mean, Yeah, we should. Gentle teasing we're doing. For those who ha- didn't listen to 70. <laughs> so tonight, from Old Nation, we have the third of their new Orthodox India Pale Ale series. This one's Boss Tweed. It's a double IPA, and like John said, was it 9%? 9.3, yeah. It's a heavy hitter. Mm-hmm. An IBU of 68. That's which the is... bitterness thing from, I believe, Pez schooled us on. Yeah. Thank you, Pez. Did we talk on air about uh, him trying Jared's mom? No, we did it. He enjoyed it. Surprisingly, he would... He gave it a four on uh, Untapped. Yeah. Wow. He did that while he was here trying it, too, because I seen him pull his phone out. I was like, oh, shit. He's about to get into it. He's a madman, folks. He is. (laughs) So anyway, back to Boss Tweed. Weighing in at 9.3%, Boss Tweed is a double New England IPA with an aroma of peach, mango, tangerine. A nice Pilsner malt backbone with a touch of Vienna provides balance and lingering sweetness on the back end. That's what she said. (laughs) I went ahead and gave it a 2.5 right off the rip. I want to get that out of the way so I don't forget. I'm going to give her a 2.75. I enjoyed uh, Cart Horse a bit better. But there are solid products. For a double IPA, like we were talking about before we uh, hit the old record button, Uh it's not as hard-hitting as most double IPAs. Definitely coming off of... The last two, I was expecting to be a heavy hitter, like you said. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's not that bad. No. It's pretty tasty. It's pretty gentle after you uh, get a few sips in. Definitely sipping. Yeah. Don't want to get too out of hand with it. This is definitely a beer for a day off. You got nothing planned, just going to sit back. Kill 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not bad, though. Like you know, like we said, it's a good thing. That's good. Try it out. If you're in the uh, Old Nation distribution area, g- give it a shot. They got solid products. I'd say so far they're one of the top three most consistent with their products. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think back what was what was more consistent. Uh, Arbor, I think, is usually pretty Arbor's reliable. pretty good, yeah. Um, Bells has had some good stuff. Yeah. They're pretty reliable. Founders, for me, is hit and miss. They have some really good ones, in my opinion, and yeah. they have some ones that I'm just like, eh, I don't know. Not for me. I feel the same way about shorts. Yeah. And there's a lot. There's a lot of, of shorts, shorts brews. And you're like, man, if you haven't tried them, you know, you don't even know what the hell you're getting into. <laughs> this is true. <clears throat> At least they're not 20 bucks for a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> Four pack. So the last couple episodes we dropped on you listeners, we had uh, guests in the studio. It's been a while since just the two of us sitting down. It really has. Bullshit. And uh, we, because of the guests and great conversations we had with uh, Mez Garth and Chris <laughs> for the Ancient Aliens, sort of. Um, we dabbled. Mm-hmm. We have neglected our homework. We have. We severely. Really have. Usually because we don't want to interrupt their stories. Absolutely. Like, they tell an awesome story, of, like Mez Garth. Like, oh, I met this guy and went on things. Oh, but, oh, did you know about this guy in Korea who has a boat <laughs> hand? It's like, what? It just throws off the whole flow. Mm-hmm. We don't want to do that because their story is really fucking fun and interesting. Sometimes we'll get lucky and we'll find a homework that'll fit the evening yeah, or the kinda, conversation. kind of slides in there. But we're at the point now where I don't even remember what my last homework assignment was. My last one was uh, I had to find something that was posted in our Facebook community. Okay. And discuss that. Okay. Mine was probably Winter of the Web because I get that a lot. Probably. Um. So I'm saying we both just go ahead with uh, Spinner's Choice here. Ooh. Pick, just pick something. We'll call it our homework to get ourselves a little back on track. Fair you enough. Know, 
depending on how the show's going forward, play out guest wise or <laughs> what have you. So I'm thinking. I don't know what I would call this. I don't want to call it the winner of the web. Um, I didn't find it on Reddit. We'll call it the homework special. There we go. We'll just we'll call it number five. Yeah. Um, I just read before you walked in this evening that the um, Super Mario Kart go kart track is opening this spring in Niagara Falls. A, that's relatively close to us. It's about a four hour drive through Canada. That's not bad. I mean, it's a four hour drive to Chicago. Right. So. Going through Canada, is, uh, I mean, if you go down and around, it's probably six, six, like maybe Ohio, seven. Pennsylvania, yeah, though. yeah. Okay. Well, regardless, that's not a bad weekend trip. Point two is when you say Mario Kart track, do you actually get to throw shit at other drivers? I doubt it. Okay. That's All probably right. the VR special, like we talked about before. Ah, yeah, yeah. You so, want that kind of experience? You're gonna have to get on a virtual <laughs> reality track or create your own. But I believe the track is set up like the, um, whatever the iconic Super Mario Rainbow track. Rainbow Road. Is that it? There's, there's a bunch. I mean, what was the, the first one I imagine was probably the most iconic because that's what everybody played. It was the first track, I right? think Rainbow Road was the big one out of the first. Uh, but, I mean, now, I don't even know how many Mario Kart games there's been. Because you got, like, all the regular systems. Then you got the DS, Game Boy, like, the Wii. Yeah. The one for the Wii is weird because they got dirt bikes and shit. Oh, that ain't right. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, Double Dash was my personal favorite. It's for the GameCube. Okay. It was the first one where you had uh, wow, a driver. GameCube. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> a driver, and then you had a guy in the back, and you could swap out. So you could have, like, Baby Mario and Regular Mario. And Were you controlling both characters? Yeah. Oh, okay. And each one has a different special move okay. that they would get. Hmm. Double Dash is a good one, folks. It'd be cool if you could, like, get two-player. And you both control the two characters, you so can you can turn yourself around and throw... Oh, you can? Yeah, you can. You Shit. can play uh, co-op to where like one guy's driving and you're in the back and you can switch out. You guys, I think you got to hit like R1 at the same time and you flip around. Hmm. But if someone's better at like defense and the other one's better at driving, yeah. you're good to go. Now, if you're a wheel man, you're a wheel man. That's true. That's, you're born with that. Right. That, that's a gift right there. <laughs> I've been in the car with some pretty good wheel men before. They're... they're not like professional criminal wheelmen. No, but no, no. People no, who no. knew how to drive well, yeah. especially yeah. in traffic. Ooh. That is interesting. I'm, I'm curious. I'm gonna have to look into this more. Yeah, get road some trip. more detail, and that would definitely be worth a fucking road trip. Yeah, weekend in Niagara Falls sounds pretty good. Because if you can gather like I don't know, 15 people, if everyone has the time off and mm-hmm. then organize it correctly, just go there, rent it out for a day. Ooh, I wonder. I again. I saw a headline. Briefly, yeah. yes. I didn't read deep into the article, so I don't know how many get to go on the track at once, but the picture it had like a, you were up high and you come down a hill, you know, so I was like, oh, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Sweet. You don't see a lot of heavy inclines on go-kart tracks, or I haven't, I should Not say. in a while. But I haven't seen too many go-kart tracks. I think the last one I seen was about two years ago. Well, there's one right up here on Van Born, but... yeah. I seen you know. uh, was it Sportway, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that was even different because they got rid of that big wooden bridge. Yeah, I was very displeased with that. There's one up north on the way up to my family's property. Mm-hmm. It's got like a, you go through a tunnel in the ho- the hill, like oh, you come sweet. down the hill, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Been ages since I was on it. But, yeah, you know, I couldn't even tell you the last time I rode in a go kart. No, no. I'd, I'd like to go when it's all adults and you can kind of forfeit the bump rule. <laughs> You know, yeah. like spin if, somebody out real quick and around a corn trip. Yeah, like let's say the you me, can't do that you, to a seven year old kid. Right. There's mean, like three other adults because then you get adults. looked at and yelled at by mm-hmm. the parents, and it's a whole thing. Right? It's like going in laser tag and just whopping ass, <laughs> <laughs> tripping kids. So when they yeah. fall, you just light them up on the ground. <laughs> I'm gonna show you kids a trick. I'm gonna put my t shirt over my vest. Can't shoot me. Go commando. Oh, that's some funny shit. <laughs> What other games did you play? Like, there was one around us. There was miniature golf, laser tag, go-karts. Never really did the go-karts that much. No. Mini golf was here and there. The places we have around us, it was all together. Like, you would go for, like, a three-, four-hour period. You get yeah. batting cages. Batting cages. The driving too. range. Yeah. Get on the go-karts. Later, they transitioned into that weird trampoline, trampoline. ball thing yeah. where you're, it's like, like Thunderdome. Yeah. 
two kids enter, one kid leaves. But they just like bouncing off walls and shit, and some of the little spots in the hole like were holes in the wall, yeah. so you could see in. And we're like, what the fuck is going on? I never got in those. No, no, no. <laughs> By the time they had that, we were too old. Well, yeah, I was probably too old. True. Yeah. You usually see, like, I don't know, like, eight-year-old kids on there. Mm-hmm. It's like being, like, 17, 18. You're like, no, no, kid. I paid for three hours. This is my time. <laughs> Step aside, son. Yeah. See that Butterfly quarter? Butterfly in the sky. Right. I would probably say the <laughs> the most recent thing would be the uh, Pump It Up place that we go to where it's, like, giant inflatables, oh. obstacle course. They have the enclosed ones, like a bounce house with a oh, basketball rim. and Yeah, we do the kids' birthday parties there oh, and shit. that's genius. They mm-hmm. probably make a boatload of cash. Yeah, it's, uh, I want to say the price, yeah. you know, but. It's worth it, though. Yeah, I think so. Because you get, like, 45 minutes in one room, mm-hmm. and it's got certain inflatables, and then you go in the other room for 45 minutes. Okay. It's got a couple of different inflatables, and then you get your half-hour pizza party for the birthday kid, gifts, ice cream, yeah. shit like that. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. That's not bad. That kind of took over for miniature golf and, you know. Yeah. Like, when we go to KOA, mm-hmm. that's when we play miniature golf. <laughs> You know, yeah, standard little course. One thing that I've seen that I've always wanted to try, mm-hmm. uh, like growing up, you'd see uh, Wild and Crazy Kids on Nickelodeon where they do like the challenges and shit. That was a great show. It was. Mm-hmm. But they had that giant inflatable like hamster ball that you would climb in and then roll you down a hill. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They have smaller versions now. Yeah. And you get in a pool. You, you can do that. That I'd like to try. That'd be that. kind of cool. And just like go on top of the water. Right. There's smaller ones that you can put on top and it doesn't cover your legs. And it's like bumper cars, but. Oh, and you're playing soccer or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. You just yeah, run yeah. and smack into people, fall over. What do they call that? Is it rocker ball? I have no idea. I've seen it. I don't know what it's called, but I want to try it. Yeah. That looks like it could be fun. I think so. I mean, you could get <laughs> flipped around pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> With your legs hanging like, out, too. If you have an adult, like no kids, just adults, maybe there was drinking. We don't know. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you don't have to clean nothing up <laughs> <laughs> from inside one of those little hamster ball things. But They just deflate it, turn it inside out, <laughs> hose it down. <laughs> Happens more than you think. Right, right. <laughs> little Purell in there, you're yeah. good to go. Yeah. Blow it back up. Bam. I did see a video on the internet of uh, it's it's a pool table, but you stand on it. And kick the pool balls with your feet. Huh. So it's okay. like like soccer, but, yeah. you know, it's a pool table size. Probably the size of this room, I'm going to guess. So you know, pretretty, pretty big. Maybe not quite this wide. Yeah, but from length. Where I'm sitting over, you know. And it's got the, the holes in the corner and the sides. Right. And then you, when it's not your turn, you stand up on the rail. When it is your turn, you get to line your shot up, take your kick. <laughs> Looks pretty fun. That wouldn't be too bad. I don't know that there's any place around here like that. No. Uh, we did discover Foaling. Yeah. That was, that's a pretty awesome game. It's um, kind of physical. <laughs> <laughs> Playing over and over and over. Yeah, if you're again, in a you tournament. Know, right. Oh. Just constantly throwing a football around. Your shoulder feels it mm-hmm. real quick. We do have a place around us that's mm-hmm. like a warehouse where you can go and rent a lane and play. That's a pretty cool game. Um, have you seen... The video of the new Russian sport that's being shared? Yes. That is fucking crazy. Now. I don't know what kind of waivers they have to fill out before participating. It's Russia. Probably none. Probably none. I don't know what the rules are there. There's one waiver. It just says, I agree. And that's it. They just (laughs) fill in the blanks. (laughs) Because at first it reminded me, you've seen uh, competitive tag. You've seen those videos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, to me, it was, like, set up like that, which just with, like, foam padding everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I like that there was one referee for, like, all 12 guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you. No, yeah. stop. Wait. No, 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 no. Me? Is too much. I'm over my head. It definitely feels like it just started out, but we should uh, probably describe it a little bit for the listener. Uh, you, the best way to describe it is MMA parkour. Yeah. It's these guys jumping up. Onto like these big foam, what would you call it? Like, um, 
American Ninja Warrior style obstacle course piece where yeah. you're running up a ramp or something. You're yeah, it's on like a, a small pyramid, and then King of like the Hill. King of the Hill. Yeah, there you go. That's a good way to describe it. It's like a game of King of the Hill, but they're but in... with MMA. So they're doing like <laughs> they got headgear suplexes on. off of like the top highest part onto the ground. The which one is dude padded. looked like he got knocked out. They look like, and yeah, then another dude's like on top, just like round and pounding a dude. And the ref's like, hey, I'm watching you, but that guy might die over here because they're jumping 20 feet. <laughs> and he's in a headlock because, yeah, okay. All right. No, he's moving, so he's okay. You think maybe the ref just kind of closed his eyes and waited till it was over? I think the ref was like the last piece of that thought. Like somebody's just like, all right, so check it out. Everyone loves MMA, right. everyone loves that Ninja Warrior shit. Right. Put them together. You have 12 guys fighting. It's like a melee, but it's on the American Ninja Warrior foam course things. And then somebody's like, dude, if we want this to be a legal sport, we're going to have to have a ref. we got to come yeah, up with some rules. Put somebody in stripes. Yeah. Come on. No fish hooking. That's it. Everything Give him a else. a whistle. Because <laughs> yeah, he looked lost. No kicks to the groin. Go. <laughs> you have six <laughs> fights going on. One guy and like. It's, different elevation and, oh, my God. It seemed like a, like a pretty crowded little space, yeah, too. Yeah, it seemed really small. It's like... About as big as our area here, yeah, right? Yeah, which I could not imagine twelve people fighting right now at elevated yeah, height, varying too. heights, and <laughs> slamming their faces into stuff. Like, okay, wow, this is violent. Would it be really funny <laughs> if the guy that was the ref didn't sign up for it, and they were just like, "Yo, put this shirt on, go through that door, and make sure nobody dies." <laughs> they probably go like. Live studio audience, right? And they're like, "Who's the tallest, biggest motherfucker in the room?" Oh, there hey, was, yeah, there were Johnny. people cheering, yeah. booing. They're like Johnny, cheering. come here, you, 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 you. A six foot four dude is like, "Hey, I'm here to watch." And they're like, <laughs> "You're gonna watch, but you're gonna watch closer than everyone else." Hey, here's here, put a this shirt on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are they going like? Time out a penalty box? I mean, what? I want to know more about this. The one dude looked like he got knocked out. They carried his ass off. The fights kept on going. Yeah. Nobody stopped. No, everyone except was focused. the ref, who had to help carry the guy out of the... So the ref was gone for like 30 seconds. Everybody hit maybe, somebody. Maybe that's just his job, is to clear the floor. That would be some shit. Wouldn't it? If he was just dragging motherfuckers out by their heels. <laughs> Get out of here. I'll oh, tell you what. That's, that was weird. Now, recently, we've seen these videos of these high-rise stunts. Yeah. With these cats on... Doing parkour and climbing. A and handstands doing, on the ledge yeah. of a, th- you know, 45, 50 story doing building. Doing a backflip and landing in the same spot. But Crazy. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm still not 100% convinced they're real. Some of them, I would say, look real, and some of them don't look that real. Mm-hmm. The only real way you can know is if they miss that landing. Right. If they fall into a green screen, then, yeah. then you're like, all right. Or if ish. they just keep falling, you're like, oh, I guess it was real. Right. <laughs> but then... See you later, Ivan. Yeah. <laughs> so if you if you think about it, if those videos are real, maybe this one was made up. And no, but I'm saying the, those well, might be the people here beating each other's asses while they're jumping around on big styrofoam courses. You know, maybe I don't know. It, it, it's Russian, so I mean, you got to take that as it is. Part of me kept waiting for a bear I, <laughs> to like come around from the back and just like start tearing people up. <laughs> I was expecting more people in uniforms, like, holding up wads of cash like this was going on in a barracks or something. Oh, like a Fight Club style yeah, thing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was definitely a, weird. Amateur night. They just, like, all 12 <laughs> are from the crowd. There's no, like, legit teams. It's just bring them yeah. in. Let's like, go. Oh, good thing I brought my gi tonight. <laughs> yeah, she's going to beat the hell out of each other. The winner gets 100 bucks. <laughs> so, as with most things on the internet, Right, mm-hmm. there's always copycats. So what I'm waiting for now, since this is still fresh in the internet world, is all the backyard wrestling style videos that are yet to come of people making their own version of this huh. game <clears throat> of death or whatever the fuck it's called. I hope that it has some sort of like weird Russian name, like Whirly Ball Light or something, or uh, be cool to translate. Jump, jump, punch, King of the Hill. You know, yeah. Just translate and jump, jump, punch. <laughs> I don't know. I don't speak Russian. Throw a kick in there, body slam off of a ten foot ledge. You know, it's like Parappa the Rapper. It's crazy shit, man. I I was impressed with the video, but like I said, I, I didn't look away. I'll I, say that much. I didn't know how to take it. 
I don't know if I'd buy a pay per view. Like, is this a one time thing? Or well, they this do this every weekend? You know. Now, what if they get some sponsorship, right? The Ocho. <laughs> the Ocho. <laughs> and they start pumping some money into this. And they get a bigger enclosure, right? With more obstacles. Like a, just a giant warehouse. Yeah. Obstacle course. Fuck paintball. Fuck laser tag. Just a warehouse full of just obstacles that are all padded. And it's like, all right, street fight, Bloods versus Crips. Let's you just, do it. You tap out and you're out. And yeah. Winner take all. The refs will have those. Uh, the refs. Attack dog suits. <laughs> <laughs> Big old padded. Like. <laughs> they should give the refs tasers too. Ooh, just in case somebody gets out of yeah. hand and they hit, hit them with a little zap. Especially if like there's a not cattle enough, prod. <laughs> especially if there's not enough refs for the amount of fight. That is going on. Yeah, if we're building a warehouse. Yeah. You know, we're talking. step the game up. You'd have at least 30. That's like a a gang street war going on. 100 on 100. Just One thing I've always wanted to do if I ever won the lottery Mm -hmm. was to buy a warehouse and set it up as a paintball haven. Okay. Multiple tiered, like cargo nets, like. The whole whole shebang of it. To get in, you got to sign a waiver. Like a military training center. Exactly. (laughs) Sniper, like. Everything would be supplied. Right. Like, you get your pick of your gun mm-hmm. or guns. Whatever color paintball you want. Yeah. Form teams, have different skirmishes. would have, like, different levels. Like so, like, Call floor. of Duty yeah, is what you want to Yeah, pretty make. much in real, real life, but yeah. with paintballs. Right. That'd be great. You should add in hand-to-hand combat. I think they got, like, the fake knives and uh, now for uh, paintball. They got, like, little fake knives. Like, I've seen one video, a dude had it, and, like, as he went to swipe somebody, like slash Like, throws him. a paintball out or something? No, it throws, like, paint against them. Oh. So then they'll have, like, a whoosh, okay. paint. That makes sense. Like, All right. I was like, seems like if that fucked up in your pocket, you'd have a bad day, but... <laughs> the ref would come running in, like, how are you walking on two legs? You've yeah, only no, got no, one no, leg no, there. No. I've seen uh, the grenades they have for them. Yeah. Holy shit. They throw some paint. Oh, Paint a fucking room real quick, or it'll dud out and just kind of spill out. We've got a friend of the show that does uh, paintball. Competitively? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Him and his brother. Yeah, they go and play. They got a team. They're always posting pictures on a bus full of people that are going off to some tournament somewhere, you know, playing a competitive paintball. I, I don't know if they play for money. Would you think first place would be money or... I mean, if there's a tournament. Gear. Maybe. Free range time? I guess maybe sponsorships would cover your Ooh, gear, yeah. you know, and your guns and different things. The hopper. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get my paintballs to the hopper. Out of the closest I've ever came to uh, playing paintball is Aaron won a free uh, round. Okay. For like a group of five people. All right. I forget where the place was at. We were all excited. We never went. <sighs> When we remembered, we're like, oh, we should totally go do that. It expired, so. The place is probably closed. Yeah, we didn't know. <laughs> That's about as close. Another idea I've had since uh, junior high is here in our great little city, there's a giant park. Yes. If you can get about 20 people to a team, okay? Okay. Two o'clock in the morning, each team starts on one side of the park, and it's a free-for-all. 2 a.m.? 2 a.m. Hmm. I know the police schedule there. <laughs> yeah. Or at least used to. <clears throat> I just assume, like, try to get it for a couple hours during the day. Do it in the daytime, if you could. I mean, the whole park. I mean... You know, if you could. Yeah. I'd Probably I not, the, but don't if you could. know the legality of... Yeah. I mean, you're going to get busted at 2 a.m. anyways. You're going to have a bunch of flashlights running around through the park. Somebody's oh, going to no see flashlights. some shit. Oh, no? No, oh. no, no. Well, how do you know who's on your team? Or is it just everybody all Free for, for all. Okay. All right. I'm with that. Yeah. Shoot whatever moves. Exactly. That's Rambo shit right there. Exactly. All right. I think that would be a game instead of going out to a field that's all netted in. and True. Oh, we put some plywood up. There's a wall. No, fuck that. There's a lot of shit inside that pipe. That'd be like a game of Fortnite come to life. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. That'd I'm be, just saying. That'd be some shit. I need uh, some money, though. Some, like, I don't mm. know, get out of jail free type money. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> I remember I worked at a spot one time a long time ago that... Um, Part of their business was selling paintball guns, filling the CO2 tanks, selling the paintballs, the clothing, different things. Mm -hmm. No names. I won't mention the name of the store. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I get it. The listener can imagine. Right. So 
we had this regular that would come in and fill his CO, CO2 tanks and uh, buy his paintballs there. And he told us he was not all there. Oh, lovely. He definitely felt like he was a couple of sandwiches short of a full picnic basket. You know what I mean? He, there was something off about this dude. He probably ended up growing up to be a flat earther. I'm just going to say that. Okay? Okay. All right. It's acceptable. He told us one time, and I hope he was making it up, but he told us one time that he got thrown out of a paintball tournament because somebody complained about something he did, and he got so pissed off that he followed this dude to, like, another tournament and froze his paintballs. Oh, shit. And, like, shit. unloaded on this guy. And I was like, how'd you keep the paintballs frozen? You know? Like, you had to transport them. Yeah. I brought my cooler. Yeah. he. It was something like that. Like, he kept them in a cooler in the car and right before the tournament is when he loaded up. And Then he told us that he shot a neighbor with a marble. Oh. And I'm like, bro, now you're starting to push... The element here. Like, that's jail time. Yeah. You know, that's you can't a, just do some murder shit depending like on what part of the body you It's a hit. paintball gun. I I believed the uh, freezing him. Yeah, I've heard of that happening. He, like I said, he wasn't all there, man, so I could see him throwing a little fit because something happened and he, you know, go for revenge. But the marble thing, I thought, you know, he was just trying to impress somebody with that story. Yeah. Now, on YouTube, I have watched a video. Uh, There's this large group, about 20 people. They had just finished a match, and they were about to start another match. And the ref's going over, all right, this is the scenario for this round. Blah, 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 blah. And apparently this, I don't know, kid had to be about 9 or 10, shot a dude and hit him in the mask the previous match. Okay. Apparently that really bothered the guy. The guy had a GoPro or something on him. So he's standing there behind the kid about 10, 15 feet. <laughs> and the ref is going on, and there's a bunch of people. And this dude is not 9 or 10. He's about 18, 19. He's an older kid. Sets his gun to full auto. Mm. I don't know if you've ever seen a paintball gun go on full auto. Mm -hmm. It's like a machine gun. Oh, yeah. Like, it sends him. It throws him out there. And he's about 15 feet away from this kid. Just lights him up. Whole back. The kid just makes this screech sound, grabs his back, like, puts his hand behind, and just crumples to the ground. I can't even recreate the sound he makes. (laughs) Yeah. And the best part of the video is the other, like, 18 people in the group simultaneously turn and look at the kid, watch him fall, turn and look at the guy, and the guy's like, what? (laughs) And then they just start, like, closing in on him. Like, what the fuck? He's a kid. And then that's where it cuts out. They probably shot that dude full of paintballs. (laughs) I hope that kid went home, because if he continued to play, he was... New scenario. <laughs> yeah, right. Light that kid up. Now it's 35 against one. Everybody hit that guy. Oh. I think it'd be cool to go play paintball, but I don't know. See, I'd be afraid of like, all right, what if you go there and like 15 minutes in, you're like, well, this is fucking stupid. Or 15 minutes in, you're like, this is the greatest thing ever, and you become that guy. That, that'd be my worry, <laughs> that I'd be that guy. Because now you have a new expensive hobby. Yeah, expensive <laughs> hobby. You ain't lying. Well, now they got that uh, airsoft. Have you seen those? It's been around for quite some time. Yeah, but it's gaining momentum. Oh, they're definitely some of the guns mm-hmm. they have now look exactly like real guns. Those videos of those shit. That's oh, impressive. Oh my god! Because those things, you got to be. How close would you say to get an accurate shot with an airsoft? Nowadays, it really depends on how much money you want to spend. Really? They have rifles that will go like 30, 40 yards accurately. And it's the those little... videos are scary, oh. man. That guy's like, ch, 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 ch. and you get the, the face comes around the corner and it hits him inside the head and he yeah. just raises his hand and walks <laughs> away. I wonder how many people are playing that game at one time. In some of those videos, it looks like there's at least 100 people, it's huh. a large facility. What do you think it would take to start a, like a compound like that, where you could turn that into a business? But whether it be paintball or airsoft or, airsoft or, 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 some or sort what of, have you, yeah. parkour, MMA, whatever. <laughs> I mean, we're we're taking all comers here. You you, you bring your game, we'll facilitate. Uh, a fantastic it. insurance policy. Um, mm-hmm. You would definitely need a chunk of land to hold that on. I mean, eleven acres, fifteen acres, something like that. I'd say around ten acres, you'd be fine. We'll, we'll go ten to fifteen comfortably, be comfortably, some, somewhere in there. Okay. Because it is like a little 
game of war yeah. that you're playing. So I have the larger opportunity with different terrain, the better. Tree stands and Tree different stand, yeah. things to hide like behind. Some of those had like uh, looked like abandoned schools. Yeah. What um you and Aaron? I I know we've I don't, I don't want to say I know. I think we've talked about this on the show before. But you and Aaron went and did the uh, the live action role play thing, right? Dagger here, I think it's what it was called. Okay, it was in Ohio, correct? Yeah. Okay, was, that was their like Super Bowl, their event. chapter or whatever was in Ohio, and that's well, where they, you guys they're went. all over. They were the hosting. I'm saying the chapter in Ohio was hosting the yeah, event I think or some so. or some shit. Okay, well, that was years ago. How big was that area you guys were in? Was it like a trailer, like not trailer park, a uh, campground, or it was a campground um, in the front half that had like some you could have RVs and that. Think of like the KOA. Okay, up in the front there where they got all that open space. Yeah. Okay. But then the back was like, I don't know, a good five acres long of just a stretch of land going back. Okay. Where all the camping went on or the or the, uh, the camping the actual went gaming. along like the edges. Different Oh, okay. Okay. Different organizations had their own little camps. Right. Uh one actually built a wall around theirs. Like people were into this. Like, cause it was like, like the movie role models. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. like they were living it for a week. Yeah. Because it was a week long event. They brought that'd be, that'd be so yeah. cool to be a part of. I'm, it I'm was so jealous I didn't get to go it, <laughs> to they, this day. Still goes on. Like uh, there was people from the New New England area. Um, our little chapter was from uh, I think Monroe, Michigan. There was people from San Francisco, Oregon, like all over the country, and they all came together. For this is like their Super Bowl event. That's dedication, man. Oh, Holy it was cow. crazy. And the worst. Well, not worst. <laughs> the most surprising thing about like everyone was cool. Like during like game time, mm-hmm. everyone was like in character. Then like at night, it was one huge party with like five hundred people. That'd be the part I'd enjoy oh, right there. It was great, and they're from different areas and they do different things. They're like, all playing a different role. Yeah, like some people were like <clears throat> engineers, like thirty year old engineers, and they were head of that clan or that. And some people were like eighteen year old kids, and they were just like, I just heard about it, so we came down. But uh. The amount of people that don't understand the type of food you bring when you go camping. Because everyone had tents. There was no, like, oh, bring in my mobile home. No, it was all tents, tents and coolers. Yeah. And you're pretty limited on what you can cook on. Like, if you were smart enough to bring, like, a Coleman stove with the propane, yeah, you got more options. Mm-hmm. But if you're cooking over a campfire... Hot dogs like, and s'mores. Sandwiches. <laughs> I mean, easy stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, one night, the group that we were with tried desperately to make spaghetti. Whoa. Yeah. Um, they were all impressed with uh, Aaron's ability to create a fire. And for the listeners out there, it is impressive. Yeah. He's been pretty good at that. <laughs> Minimal. Um, Made us worry sometimes how good he was. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you'd make a few. <laughs> like one big fire and then a bunch of small fires around that fire. Hey, look, they're all related. <laughs> Not saying he had a problem, but Mm-mm. it's impressive the skill he has for building a fire. He was the only one ever hurt. <laughs> 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 that is true but yeah people would try to make like spaghetti full meals like okay I brought a wok what can we make it's like why'd you bring a wok right, you're well camping. I can put it in the fire it's like okay what are you making well we could try stroganoff or something it's like that's ambitious <laughs> ambitious is one way of putting it <clears throat> so eventually about I don't know third day in they ran up to the store and got more appropriate camping foods. Hot dogs and bread, yeah. buns, different yeah. things, yeah. <laughs> Aaron and I were just sitting back, like, as they're still like, how are we going to do the noodles? We're sitting there eating, like, huh, should we tell them? Well, they look like they're figuring it out, so, okay. Just enjoy the ride. Yeah. This was before uh, you had cell phones in everybody's hand, too, I'm sure, right? Uh, I was still a minor. Yeah, okay, so... I had to sign a waiver. I had to have my parents sign it so I could go. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. It'd it be cool time. to start some shit like that. Maybe not, you know, the live-action role-play, but yeah. like we were talking, the airsoft or the... Some sort of big event yeah. where you can get... Yeah. I'm looking at the party of it. That's all. Oh. Like, what, what activity can we have during the day to throw a party at night? Then they would have, like... There were about three organizations there that were larger like one were like the roman empire they had like 60 people in their little camp right there was another one that had close to 100 like in each night 
a, one of the three would host, like the main. Get yeah, together. you said one of the groups was like Vikings or something, right? Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool because it was all uh, pre-gunpowder. It could be anything. Mm-hmm. Some of the people there, like oh, the first time, like me and Aaron, like all right, we're just getting into it. Some people there, it's like they're lifers. There was one dude. <laughs> I don't know what organization he was with, but we were doing one big skirmish, like just like sixty people on each side, and uh, we were on the opposite side of the Romans, and they had full shields, like five foot tall huh. curved Roman shields. Yeah, so how are we gonna win this fight? Yeah. So they <laughs> built the front wall of the naturally and started moving forward. <laughs> I'm standing next to this guy, I'm like, "All right, I'm new. How do we uh, go about this?" He's like, "Just." Charge. Follow the guy who's going to run and go through the hole. I was like, who's the dumb guy who's going to run over there? <laughs> he was like, oh, you'll see. Was it him? No. <laughs> this dude, like, our <laughs> group kind of split, and this dude walked up to the front. He had to be seven foot tall. <sighs> like, built like a lineman, like 350 pounds. Like, he had, uh, like, a leather armor thing that went around his shin. Mm-hmm. A girl later on in the day was using it as a top oh damn homeboy was big yeah did he give some kind of like brave heart speech no throw his hand up no he, he threw just his took hand off. up oh okay he walked out and like the romans stopped and he was like <laughs> and his gryffindor <laughs> his group of people yelled ogre make hole and he fucking took off running this like a awesome lineman. like full bore running into the Romans and knocked everyone on their ass. Like a bowling ball. Yeah. Just that was his job. I later found out that was his quote-unquote like uh, role-playing name was Ogre Make Hole. So they were just cheering on their buddy. <laughs> so he breaks through and then all of us <laughs> like followed right behind like an arrow and then split them apart. Right. So once you're behind the shields then you it's start just swinging. Melee. Yeah. yeah. But they had people with uh, bows and arrows. You would have like a regular compound, or not compound, but like a the cheap little Long bows. bow or recurve yeah. or something. Like, yeah, okay, the cheap ones, yeah. And then you would uh, cut off an arrow and then put a giant fucking Nerf ball, yeah. attach it, and you could only quarter draw. So you can't full draw and hit somebody because then really fuck them up. But if you do a little quarter draw, it still goes pretty far. Yeah. And it's a light yeah. thump. I mean, it's a Nerf ball. So yeah. You're, you know what you're signing up for. Exactly. Mm, whatever. It was a great time. That'd be fun. I think it'd be cool. They had a, uh, <laughs> they had different challenges throughout the week, and uh, one of the games was uh, assassin. You could sign up to be an assassin, or you could sign up to be a target. Okay. So, if you signed up to be an assassin, randomly, one of the organization leaders would walk up to you and hand you a piece of paper with somebody's name on it. Wouldn't say shit. Just be like, boop, there you go, and it'd have somebody's name, and you would have to find out. Like, who is this person? Where are they? What camp? And in non-game time, so like after hours, you had to kill them. Now, when you did you take part in this game? I did. Were you an assassin or a target? I signed up to be an assassin. Okay, did you get a hit? No. Okay. My guy was killed by somebody else. Because I'm wondering, when you sneak up on somebody and you hit them, you know, do you announce, hey, I killed you, I'm an assassin? After you hit them. Like, if you hit them... You had to call, like, they have different uh, categories of weapons. Okay. They were color-coded, and as you hit them, you'd call that color, so they know if they were either stabbed or slashed oh, okay. or okay. blunt force hit. So there's, like, a rules manual yes. that you guys had to study? Uh, we got a crash course there day one. I was going to say, <laughs> did you read the book on the way down, or... So you show up, and they just, like, hand you a little we stapled made, pamphlet? We, uh, no, we, uh, Aaron and I made our weapons previously and then when we got there they're like all right so here's pretty much the you had to be inspected i'm sure the weapon yeah, every you know. time okay and then uh our group the leaders were like okay so we're going to take you from basic to where we are at and see where you fall and okay. then we'll figure out what's best for you and they would go over all like all right, if you get hit in the leg then you lost that leg if you lose two limbs you're dead if you get hit in the chest with a certain blah 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 blah, blah. right do you remember, did you guys have to rent your own campsite, or did you pay money to the group? And- we chipped in, I believe, to the group. Okay. Like, they rented the whole area, and then everyone threw in. Gotcha. Okay. That's probably a better way to do it. I think so. Like, everybody, a part of the alliance, you would call it, uh, pays dues almost, you know. It was crazy. 
Hmm. It was a good time. I'm trying to think if there's any other games that either is popular now or, you know. You that, would be that surprised we... what's out there that you never heard of. <laughs> True. Again, like the Russian MMA parkour thing. Yeah. Punch, punch, jump. I it's mean, a shit. crazy, crazy High game. school teams have, like, bowling league. and Still, like, yeah. Dude, if we had bowling when I was in high school, I'd have been a fucking straight-A student. You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we had swimming, but it was like, ah. And it sucked, because, like, every four years, they changed up what sports they had. Yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, to jump back a little bit about the Assassin game. Okay. Don't know who the kid was, but he fucking won. So... It was like day three. He won the assassin game? Yeah. Okay. He killed everybody. <laughs> so they would have, like, part of the money that you pay to go, like, they would have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Or I think breakfast and lunch, and then you had to provide your own dinner. So basic stuff. Right. Uh, they would get their water from a natural spring that was on the property. So when you signed up for the game, they had things you could purchase. One was a row of stickers that were green. Okay. They were poison. So instead of using real poison, you would put a sticker on something. So they used it and poisoned it. I can totally see where this is going. In the middle of the night, (coughs) the kid went out and put his whole roll of poison stickers all around the spring. Nobody noticed. So the next morning, like everyone's eating breakfast, right? Drinking water. Drinking water. (laughs) If there was any any food that was used to cook, yeah. And uh, somebody walked up to one of them head organizers whispered in his ear walked away and the guy just started laughing and he walks and the main guy walks way over to the spring comes back he's like huh he's like can i get everyone's attention you're all dead yeah he's like anyone who was playing the assassin game whether you were an assassin or a target you were now dead and everyone's like what he's the like camp grows silent he's like if you brought you your own water and haven't drank anything or eaten anything provided by us raise your hand nobody raised their hand he's like yeah you're all dead you all lose. And then he said what happened. I was just like, oh, motherfucker. Genius. He even went as far as going to the uh, bathrooms, the building, and putting it in every shower, on every sink. Oh. Like he hit he, the toilet paper, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that kid, whoever he was. He thought that shit out. He planned it well. Damn. That's diabolical right there. Wonder where he's at now. <laughs> NASA, I hope. <laughs> Possibly locked away. Who knows? Shit. <laughs> Shawshank. All right. Yeah. You know, it's crazy to think how much time people invest in stuff like that. At first, like when I first heard of it. And was, I mean, don't get me wrong. It'd be a lot of fun. I'm not yeah, knocking the no. activity. But in, in the beginning, like when I was being persuaded to try it out. Right. I was just like, that sounds fucking stupid. Right. You don't know what you're getting into. Yeah, you're like, ah, oh, these fucking weird kids wearing cloaks and fucking... Mm. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt. But it was a really good time. And it's surprisingly uh, taxing, physically. Well, yeah, I mean, you're in battle. You're in battle running around a fucking field. Carrying a, what was probably five to ten pound... Uh, I had a war hammer that was about five foot long. Made out of foam and PVC. Yeah, so it was... I mean, you know, it wasn't the heaviest like, thing you've ever lifted, no, but, but still. No, but swinging that consistently right. and trying. Running. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, it's like soccer. Dodging but, other weapons. Oh, there's another new game we could create. Fuck the Russians punch, punch, kick thing, right? <laughs> we take soccer and mix it with MMA. That might... We'll ooh. call it rugby. Yeah, right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you had me thinking for a minute, too. I'm like, how are we going to pull this off? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Rugby. Shit. Oh, I watched a... Well, I didn't watch... I seen a clip randomly on some sort of social media. I forget which one. But it was a rugby game. And this dude did a block to help his other teammate keep running. And he smoked this other guy, like, shoulder. Boom. And there are no pads. And he was running full bore. Caught this guy blindside. And they did a slow-mo after the hit and replayed it and you watch his face he hits and he's just like ha and he just kind of gives like a huh look not sad not hurt not confused it's more like what was that and then you see him move he dislocated his shoulder Uh. so he immediately kneels down right puts his forearm on his thigh and pops his shoulder back in gets up wipes the sweat off his face goddamn he man and keeps fucking running damn 
And I was like, huh, I don't think I could play that game. Nope. <laughs> Nor do I want to. <laughs> wow. It's like, okay, rugby and hockey. Mm. Like, those guys are dedicated. Yeah. Some positions on a football field, too. Mm. You know. I've heard of a football player. They were playing on a stadium that had AstroTurf. And as he got, like, went to the ground, his finger went in between the seam. Oh. And when it came out, it was, like, half ripped off. So it went, like, back to the doctor. And he was like, yeah, just cut it off and stitch it. I want to go back out. Some dude gave up his (laughs) finger to continue playing football. Well, yeah. Was it pro? It had to be pro, pro. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a paycheck involved in that shit, so. Remember that um, one time that hockey goalie took a skate to the neck and just, like, damn near bled out right on the ice? One of the refs was a EMT. Yeah. He was refing on, like, as his part-time, like, yeah. (laughs) He was in the back there like, hey, Joey, (laughs) put a ref shirt on. You're up. (laughs) And that was the most important (laughs) game. (laughs) Yeah. Because he jumped on that guy right off. shine. And it's amazing to think, like, looking at uh, hockey now, and how the goalies are decked out. They got the throat guard. They got the big helmet. They oh, got yeah, the big pads. Almost and, no net left. Yeah. It's just all pad. But then you look back in like the 80s and the 70s when sometimes the goalies didn't, didn't like wear wearing mask. the helmet. Yeah. They were like, fuck that. I can't see. That's crazy, dude. And then you never heard of like anyone dying or getting cut like that or like, yeah, maybe once or twice they smashed up their face a bit from a puck, but. Well, the thing, too, that I noticed, uh, if you watch a lot, their their sticks weren't as curved as they are now. That's so true. a lot of the shots didn't leave the ice, you know, over waist high. All right, that's fair. So to, to not have a mask on, it was almost okay. I get it. I wouldn't have done it. No, no. <laughs> but, I mean, Fuck you still that. had the big hits in the oh, doors yeah. and that. Oh, yeah. Shit, yeah. The Gordy Howe hat trick, dude. <laughs> Whooping ass all over the place. Well, we've uh, covered a few things tonight. We have a few more minutes left. Did you have anything else in the hopper you wanted to toss out there? I had or? one story that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Uh, I did get it off our community oh. on Facebook. All right. Page, All right. Which is always nice. Yeah. It's about a movie coming out July 3rd, 2000. Oh, uh, see, I just lost it. 2020. July 3rd, 2020. Yep. Okay. It's called Free Guy. And stars a one Mr. Ryan Reynolds. Free guy. Free guy. Gotcha. It also stars Jody Com- Comer from Killing Eve, Lil Rel from Get Out, and Joe Keery from Stranger Things. So Ryan, so Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Some people that you've seen in other things. <laughs> so Ryan Reynolds is a bank teller who's stuck in constant routine like every day the same thing in our groundhog's day kind of gotcha well he discovers he's a background character in a rather brutal open world action adventure video game and he's the only one capable of saving his world (laughs) so he gets help from an avatar played by comer whose in-game name is molotov girl but in the real world she's a mousy programmer who actually created the game but was devastated when it was stolen from her Ryan Reynolds' best friend, who's also a non-playable character, doesn't believe all his friends' crazy ideas of we're in a video game. So, in my mind, it's going to be like the adult version of Wreck-It Ralph, mixed with Ready Player One. That's not bad. That's not bad. And That's it's not Ryan a bad Reynolds. comparison. I've got a comparison that I'd like to throw out, the way you were describing it to me. What mm-hmm. my brain went to was Dwight's second second life from uh, The Office... Uh, Mixed with the Truman Show. With a little dash of falling down. Because in the Truman Show, he had the love interest who was trying to save him. Mm-hmm. There you go. You have that aspect. Um, Wreck-It Ralph, though, because it's a video game. Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind of all four mixed into one idea. Huh. I wanted to say, because uh, there's very little that's out about it. Just that little blurb that I read. Yeah. But given most of Ryan Reynolds' movies where there's a lot of gun action and... Mm-hmm. I would let, you do remember the movie Falling Down? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Where he just loses his shit. Great movie. Exactly. The no. older I get, the more I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Defense. One hundred percent. So if you mix that with a little bit of comedy mm-hmm. from Mr. Ryan Reynolds, mm-hmm. much like I don't know if you've seen uh Hitman's Bodyguard, him and Sam Jackson. I did not see that, no. Whole lot of motherfuckers dropped in that movie. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Put it on my list. <laughs> it's worth a watch. But I think this one could be a uh, fan favorite. Hmm. So we should probably look for it at one of the uh, film festivals coming up here. <laughs> or the soon. art houses, yes. Yeah. <laughs> They'll drop it to get a reaction before the <laughs> July 3rd, 2020 date. Oh, the trailer's going to be great, I think. Yeah, he's a great actor. It's funny to think back on some of his earlier roles, too. Two Guys, a Girl, in a Pizza Place. You remember that show? I don't. Oh, that was a good show. I think it was only like two seasons, though. Uh, yeah, I don't think... And he was like, he was a skinny little guy at that point. He was young. But it was him, another guy, and a girl, and they ran a pizza place. Huh. And hilarity ensued. That doesn't ring a bell. No. I was thinking more of, like, waiting. <laughs> it was a great movie. That was you know? a great movie. Anybody that's worked in that industry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely a great movie. <laughs> it's the goat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that part wasn't so great. No. But it was Overall, funny yeah. nonetheless. You know, I still haven't seen Deadpool. Which one? The first one. You seen the second one, though? No. Oh, well, no. I wouldn't watch the second one before I watched <laughs> I was the gonna first say, one. Like, no. All right, so how did that treat you? Know? No, I haven't watched them. Really? It's like I said, we've went over this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we know your schedule. John and movies, they don't mix. <laughs> we actually we were going to sit down and watch Ready Player One last night. That's a good movie. But we just didn't get around to it. I mean, it's it's pretty basic storyline, but yeah. all the extras and Easter eggs that are hidden throughout the whole thing, you'll be sitting there like, oh, fuck, Robocop. Yeah. Ninja Turtles? Battletoad. No, we ended up... Uh, just kind of hanging out, and then uh, once the kids went down for bed, we uh, watched Walking Dead. Okay. Stay current with that. I don't know if you've been keeping no, up. No, 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 no. Oh. Haven't been up to a uh, day. I'm enjoying it. I think they're doing well. I've uh, jumped in the habit of waiting until it comes out on Netflix or some just sort of streaming, whole... and then just knock yeah. it out in a weekend. The binge watching. Yeah, it's pretty smart for shit like that. Definitely. I'm looking for a new series to get into. Something I can go back and watch like that, binge watch it all. I got a few for you. Yeah. <laughs> I tried, uh, what was it, Black Mirror? That's weird. I only That's got through that first three shit. episodes, and I, I just couldn't, I don't yeah. know. It was like Twilight Twilight Zone's coming back. I seen that. Uh, was it Key or Peele? Uh, Jordan Peele, Jordan I believe, Peele. Yeah. is his name. Is He's the one that's doing it. I'm excited about that. That looks interesting. Mm-hmm. It almost has a J.J. Abrams feel to it when you're watching the trailer. And I'm like, man, if he if I see his name in the credits, I'm I, in. I guarantee JJ so? Abrams would not pass up an opportunity to direct oh, no. an episode. No. I mean, come on. It he would write like the story, he, he would be like, I'm fucking do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it feels like it should be his project. And what I the hope the way it looked. Like, if this starts to take off and does well, mm-hmm. like maybe they bring back outer limits. Maybe they bring back some of the other Tales from the Crypt. Exactly. Some of that because that shit was great. They were cheesy. Yeah. But they were entertaining. Made for good Saturday night programming. Yeah. You know, something to stay home and watch. And most of the time, it was original. Like, it was stories that you're like, oh, look at this. This is fucking weird. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just like, all right, we're going to reboot this. Yeah. We're going to bring back Hawaii Five O, but in 2010. Like, it's stupid shit. MacGyver. <sighs> Goddamn. Magnum P.I. Exactly. The list goes on, folks. You know. You have TV. You know what's going on. <laughs> the B Team. I'm drawn to old favorites, man. Oh, like, yeah. I want to start Lost again. I'd like to do The Sopranos again. I want to know? do The Sopranos again, too. I never got into Prison Break. Neither did I. I it was an awesome that concept. Just to, sh- just to see how it plays out, you know? Now, did Mr. Jabrams, was he a part of Prison Break? Because that seemed to something as elaborate and hidden. You know, I'd have to look back on that. I don't know. I'd never heard of him before Lost, so I don't know what yeah. he did before that. I can look that up real quick. But if any listeners happen to be paying attention still and they have a good show they want to recommend yeah Yeah. please recommend something for me to watch i'll get into it i'll give it a shot too yeah we have hulu netflix hbo we got all the greats we'll find something or if you tell us we'll find it oh yeah please uh you can hit us up on twitter at uh corner hc podcast we're heavy there instagram chc underscore podcast although that's all pictures but if you show us a picture of a tv show (laughs) yeah i'll watch it Drop us a comment under one of the pictures. Mm-hmm. Facebook. Send Corner us House a message. Chronicles. Yeah. What's the email there? Cornerhouse Chronicles at Gmail. You yeah, can get com. us there. Oh, yeah. Shit. We're everywhere. We're accessible, folks. Give us something to watch. How about you provide us with a homework assignment? There you go. You know, a little interaction. That'll be nice. I'm sure the usual characters we have on our social media, we're going to just 
I know two that I popped in my head at first. One, uh, Mr. Guido mm-hmm. would probably just throw out some weird shit. But uh, Ken, I think, might have something in the uh, barrel loaded to shoot out to us. Yeah. Bill Fears is in some wild shit, too. He might have something to say. That's true. Anything. Any listener. Give me something. I'll at least put one episode in just to see what it feels like, whatever show it is. Listen to that commitment, folks. Hey. That's for you. I got to find something to watch. I keep going back to the old shit. You know you watched The Office 17 (laughs) times in a row. Shit. Ah, it's so good. And it's always, it's reliable. It's always there. Yeah. You know what you're getting. No disappointment. Parks and Rec is the same thing, too. You can watch that a couple of times over and over again. Good shit. We like it. But, again, we want something new. We're looking for more. Help us out, folks. Please. Well, this has been fun, sir. I'm glad we got it together. Happy 71. Happy 71. It's weird to say. We're throwing our scheduling off just a little bit by squeezing this one in. We didn't want to waste the time. No, fuck that. We already paid for it. Exactly. And you wouldn't have heard all our fun stories. No. Felt like a pretty good episode. I think it was Uh, solid. We we covered some shit. That Russian MMA thing with the parkour. That's great. I'm glad we talked about that. I'm still saying that's going to continue on for a while. You think it's going to catch on? That's going to feed us. Uh, Just from like the backyard wrestling aspect of it. All the people that are going to try to copy it. Yeah. The YouTube videos alone are going to be gold. The one thing I thought when I first seen it, I believe it was Joe Rogan shared it on Facebook, is how I seen it. Okay. And uh, as soon as it started, I thought to myself, this is American Ninja Warrior with a defensive team, (laughs) which is American Gladiators. But for real. Now, Now imagine, again, thinking back to the video you watched. I think Gladiators, American Gladiators was more tame because it was really everyday average Joe. Nobody's yeah. going against these big, didn't make it as a pro wrestler or football player people, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. The dudes anyways, you know, whatever. But what I was going to say, though, is imagine that video of them doing that, the ref being all confused, and then out of nowhere, tennis balls just start fucking <laughs> berating all 13 people. And the camera pans up, and you just have a dude... Dressed in spandex and glitter. Cyclone. Yeah, named like, you know, <laughs> Thunderclap. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and he, every, occasionally he stops and looks at the camera and does like a fist pump. Yeah. Shakes the mullet out. Goes back to firing <laughs> tennis balls at everybody. I think. What if the ref uh-huh. in the middle Wait. of the match was just like, and he took off and he got on the tennis ball <laughs> gun. And he was the one shooting at people. This definitely has potential. That's all I'm saying. Or if he got one of those t-shirt guns, like a handheld, but it's full of <laughs> tennis balls, and instead of like tasering people, he just shoots them with tennis balls to get them to break up. No, no, I still like the idea of him with a taser, but then you get other people, oh, okay. a la American Gladiators. Oh, man, this is great. I'm just saying, they, whew, this is gonna they be opened awesome. the door. Mm-hmm. Some Russian guy was like, what if we combine? <laughs> You, you up on the building. I want to come down here and fist fight. I think uh, CHC should try to contact these folks with their ideas. Pitch it to them, you know. Send them a clip of American Gladiators and be like, I just think you got all this going on. Mm -hmm. You got arena lights, horns, fog machines. People cheering, drinking vodka, all kinds of crazy shit. A bear in a cage somewhere. (laughs) He's the final boss. Whoever wins the battle royale then the has to fight a bear. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you beat the bear, you have to fight Khabib. Ooh, and if you beat Khabib? Putin. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. I would pay $100 for pay-per-view for that. It would just be a $5 a month charge. How many rubles do you want? 24 I'm hours, seven days a week. Oh, my God. People fall out, more people jump It'll in. It'll be fucking... Uh, <laughs> The Hunger Games. There'll be a lottery. <laughs> people just get randomly selected. <laughs> prisoners. <laughs> oh. Just escorting prisoners oh in. Oh, my. This needs to happen. Here you go. This you would be the out? greatest show in the history of Earth. You know, if America was to adapt that show, they could just take, like, um, the fuck's that prison off the coast of uh, California? The island. The, fam- the famous prison no longer operational. The fuck is it? Oh, San Francisco. Alcatraz. Yeah. Yeah. Put Set it, it there. Put it in there. Oh! So you have different levels. Cages. Oh, Fuck. Yeah. Good times. On an island. Trademark? No Question getting away. <laughs> I don't know if we can... 
We'll figure this out, folks. If you want to add to this hodgepodge of crazy, Mm -hmm. please. We want to hear more ideas. This was an excellent evening. And we want to thank you very much for uh, paying attention to us. You know, coming along on this journey. We appreciate it. Over and over and over again. Please stay tuned. We got Uh, some big things coming. We have big things coming, absolutely. Big guests coming. Exciting things. Uh, we do have a couple of episodes that are going to drop real quick on you, much yep. like this one did. Yeah. So pay attention. Be ready for it. Hopefully take your, you can keep up. Take your time and listen to them. We're good with that. All right. Until next time, we want to th- uh, thank Old Nation Brewing. From Boss Tweed. Boss I-P-A. Tweed. Boom. It was tasty. It was. I only very got, good. I only got through one, but. No. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Yeah. I just started number two. I probably won't even finish it. <laughs> It's heavy. It is. It is kind of sitting a little heavy, I noticed. In a good way. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not that I want to dump three more 16-ounce oh, man. beers down my system here. Still good shit. Shout out to uh, Old Nation for Boss Tweed, Cart Horse IPA, and M43. All very good beers. The whole series. Thumbs up. CHC. Cheers. Clank. To the listeners. Once again, please, real quick, like, because you don't have much time left to go fill out a bracket prediction for our best wrestler bracket. It's closing soon. Yep, it's going to be starting up soon. Uh, all the voting takes place on our Facebook and Twitter pages. So if you're interested or in Patreon. helping us. Hint. Or Patreon. Hint, hint. But if you're interested in helping us select the best wrestler of all time, please play along. We encourage the voting. Share it. Get your friends involved. We appreciate that. We do. It's a good time. Yep. Definitely. And so we'll say until episode 72, we bid you adieu. Nice. I want to watch that fucking show now. Fucking Russian American gladiators. (laughs) Russian gladiators. Fuck it. Putin's posse. (laughs) Who do you find after Khabib? Putin. It's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And that's how you get your freedom. <laughs> <laughs> you want pardon? <laughs> Putin just rips his shirt off, and everybody's like, "Oh, he fuck. comes in on a fucking horse." He's <laughs> like, "Yo," and you're like, uh. he throws you a joust stick, and you're like, "Where's yours?" He's like, "I need nothing." He's like, "I am this joust stick." Uh, fuck it, he throws him a loaded gun. <laughs> 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 oh shit. <laughs>